Hey, Martin, for the first question is, are they missing anything? And I, I hearken back to something that I learned when I started on Wall Street many years ago, that you do not go broke taking money off the table. You highlighted what Tesla has done over the past year. I would add that if we look over a two-year period, that's up about 15, about 1,500%. I think that those major supporters, either lightening their load or exiting their position is more just about them managing their wealth and it's uh, an indication about what Tesla has ahead of it. Uh, true that 1500% returns over two years are now off the table for Tesla, I would agree with that. But I do believe that ultimately this can be a $2,500 stock and I, we can kind of talk about how we get there and so a question I would have is, uh, does going from 800 to 2,500 over the next five years, uh, it's going to take some time there. But I think the results that they just put up for September were nothing short of spectacular. And I think that uh, the thesis that they had invested in is continuing to play out faster. And I think uh, with more uh, substance against the auto industry than probably they ever imagined. So, uh, you know, TSLA, 2,500, five years out. We'll talk about, uh, uh, we'll get you to make the case in just a bit. But uh, in the here and now, Gene, uh, unlike, let's say, uh, the legacy automakers, for that matter, some of their EV competitors as well, uh, is Tesla uh, suffering through the same sort of supply chain kinks and uh, uh, having to deal with the chip shortage? Yes. But they seem to be managing pretty darn well. If you take a look at their deliveries, they're still far. I mean, the lead between them and the legacy car makers uh, it just continues to be nice and wide. What are they doing that the, the, uh, their rivals are, are not or are not able to get a handle on in, in terms of this uh, ship shortage? So, so let me quick uh, frame in what nice and wide is. I would agree with that language. It's about a 50% faster growth that Tesla has reported over the last two years. And the results uh, that they just put up on uh, a few days ago, I think will be representative of that growth. I just want to quick put another uh, point around that is this would imp include about 120% uh, year over year growth. Uh, if you adjust for the comp last quarter, that means that adjusting for the comp, the pace of growth was consistent above 100% for two quarters in a row, it's spectacular. So then begs the question of what is going on in this narrative that Tesla is going to uh, somehow uh, lose their ground relative to all this EV competition. There are parts of that which are true is Tesla is losing market share in EV from virtually 100% share in many countries. But I suspect that they will uh, baseline at a much higher market share than any auto company today. If you look at kind of Volkswagen has about a 15% market share and I, Mark, I, I will answer your question here. What are, is Tesla doing right? It's pretty simple. They have the best value uh, for an EV right now. It just is, if you look at range and features, uh, this is a clear choice for consumers. And they are voting in the form of purchasing uh, the cars. Gene, how is Tesla performing in the China market? China's been a challenge. And I think in part because there are many automakers, EV automakers, uh, uh, NEO, for example, that have had a, a ton of success. Uh, I think that uh, their share uh, has diminished. Um, and I think it's uh, still an important market that's uh, on the table. I'd be curious to see uh, how, how deliveries are going to play out over the next few quarters. And I would just put this, uh, if I was in Tesla's shoes, getting China right is probably the biggest lever uh, to, for uh, upsize. And uh, I think probably one of the biggest uh, reasons why Tesla has not performed maybe as well in China as in other countries is just the, simply the price of the product uh, relative to some of the competition. It's been harder to compete on that front. Uh, still a long ways uh, to go. I suspect that they're going to be pushing down the price of Model Y and Model 3 in China, which should probably help boost sales in the year to come.